uh, Outsell, and I'll give you the very brief, the 10-second uh, elevator pitch for Outsell. We, we, we do have a UK component of Outsell. We actually merged with a firm called EPS, and many of you probab probably know David Warlock and, and, and his work, so EPS is, is part of Outsell. If you know Gartner Group, the, 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 the shortest uh, description of Outsell is that we're the Gartner Group of the information industry. So we do primary research and advisory services for mostly publishers and for technology companies serving publishers. Uh, with that, have I stalled long enough? Are there slides? Yes, no? No, all right. Well, we'll make do. The theme that I wanted to use to kick off this <coughs> session, uh, because it is reinventing the business model, is a comparison with something that's, that's going on It's probably too hard to handle quickly. Okay. Is something that comes from the world of physics. Now, I was actually, uh, years ago, I was a physics major in my undergraduate work, and then I sort of drifted uh, to the dark side of information and publishing and media and analytics and, and, and so on. But because of that, I, I think there's a special carryover that I want to set up our panel uh, with, and, and that is the idea of the work that's going on at places like uh, CERN and the Brookhaven Labs, and the idea of trying to recreate the conditions that existed at the time of the uh, Big Bang. So actually the title of my presentation, which you can't see, is Life After the Big Bang and the New Universe. So why do I think it's, it's relevant? Let me just read something which I'm, I find fascinating. Uh, there's a great book, if you all are interested in this area at all, it's by Nobel Prize winner Frank Wilczek, and he calls it The Lightness of Being. Obviously a play on the unbearable lightness of being, the, the, the famous novel, but in, in The Lightness of Being, and this, this is uh, a quote from the uh, jacket of the book, uh, our understanding of nature's deepest reality has changed radically over the past quarter century. We all live that, except it's been the last 10 years, not, not quarter century. Transcending older ideas about matter and space, Wilczek explains a remarkable new discovery, and here's the point. Matter is built from almost weightless units. Seems just backwards. Matter is built from almost weightless units, and pure energy is the ultimate source of mass. That's the title, The Lightness of Being. And if you just, you know, substitute, substitute in effect that uh, the world we live in of understandings and principles and axioms turned on their head, that's really what, what I see as the equivalent to the Big Bang that's affected publishing. Coming out of the Big Bang also is this search for the conditions that existed at the, pre at the beginning of the universe and for this whole new world of particles. When I went to school, the periodic table had 102 elements. Now, in the world of high energy physics, we have gluons and mesons and bosons and quarks, charmonium, and my favorite, botamonium, which sounds like something Richard Feynman must have invented. And each of these have flavors and colors and directions. And in one of the master branding strokes, we had to talk about branding this morning, one of the master branding strokes even physicists are good at branding. The search for the Higgs boson particle, you've probably heard, often referred to as the God particle. So great, great branding for that. Now, my next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Just get your uh, cameras and zoom in. You can, uh, you, you can see it. It's actually the CERN Large Hadron Collider. And the headline here on this is, you know, core properties for succeeding in this environment are scale and clout. I mean, these are big machines, and what I show here is a tiny little person in the middle of this, this collider. Scale and clout, and I think the key to the panel we have is these are all companies with scale and clout who can manage really this transformation of these new elements that now make up publishing. So, I laid out four themes, the panel may or may not agree with me, we'll find out, that in our work at Outsell have risen to the top of what's determining B2B media futures and success and failure. One is the idea of uh, following global growth. 
go where growth is, and in many cases it's global. We'll talk about that. The second is marketing services, and a key element of marketing services for publishers is the way it offers a clawback to some seriously, seriously lost revenue, and we'll come to that. Uh, pervasive analytics uh, drives monetization rates, number three. Pervasive analytics, number three. I published something last year where I said the key determinant of the distinction between successful and unsuccessful media companies five years from now is going to be the, the extent to which they've integrated pervasive analytics into all aspects of their content, their audience engagement, and their advertising. And finally, workflow and an obsession with workflow. Workflow driving loyalty and driving revenue. We talked a lot about engagement this morning. I mean, workflow is really a matter of enhanced engagement, or E, e squared, if you, if you choose. I don't know why I'm carrying around this, uh, this forward machine since I can, can forward with my hands here. Uh, my next slide <laughs> is the headlines, all that matters, is that we're actually coming out of this recovery, I mean, out of this recession. Uh, we're entering a period with the global B2B media industry uh, facing a number of years, at least a half a decade of half-speed recovery. You're all working through what is a half-speed recovery. Now, half compared to what? And what the chart sh shows is that coming out of the last recession, 2001, 2002, the global B2B revenue trend numbers, I'll just read them out. Uh, second year after the recession, 8%, third year, 5%, uh, next year, 6%, and the year after that, 8%. Those were total global growth rates, all sources, advertising and subscriptions and user paid data services. Our forecasts out through 2014 for the global B2B industry are roughly half that. Numbers like 3.2%, 3.1%, and 3.5%. So half speed recovery. So where do you find where do you find higher revenue growth in that half speed recovery environment? And again, our panel reinventing the business model is all about revenue. This is a world map. One of the areas you can find it is global markets. Uh, looking back and I've got uh, compound annual growth rates 2006 through 2011, which of course encompasses the recession. The global growth rate in the U.S. for all B2B media revenue was negative. It was negative 1.2%. Again, when I say B2B, I'm talking B2B trade media. This doesn't include the science, technical, medical, and some of the other areas of <coughs> professional media. In Europe, the same period, it was actually plus 1.1%. But here's the, the kicker is Latin America, same period, through the recession, was up 4.8%. 4.8, that's you know, four times the European rate, and, and the US was negative, so you can't even compare. And then finally, Asia Pacific was up 7.2%. So the global growth history has come from Latin America. China, the panel will certainly address some of that. Marketing services, I can sort of collapse into two numbers. We at Outsell track all advertising and marketing spending uh, from advertisers. So I'm speaking advertisers now, not publishers. We've been doing this for seven years now on an annual basis. One of the things our data showed, because we didn't just limit it to paid media or uh, advertising on, on media sites, was the diversion of marketing spending, digital marketing spending, to advertisers to companies own websites. And just keep in mind, total marketing budgets of companies typically follow economic cycles, but they don't shrink or swell very quickly. So if money is being siphoned into companies' own websites and their own content and direct to consumer, it's coming out of something. So that's, in effect, a lost opportunity, and that's why we talk about the clawback opportunity, opportunity for media companies to provide marketing services that help advertisers who are trying to go direct through their own websites and other. And here's the number. This is, a, this is a U.S. number. I've done this for U.K. I just don't have the number with me today. But for the U.S., the dollars spent by companies on their own websites and related content was $67 billion last year. $67 billion. Over 50% of their digital marketing is on their own websites and related content and activities. 
over 50%, $67 billion. Publishers like, used to, I think this, this fad's died down a little bit, but they, they liked, we all like to blame our fates on Google. Google's killed our business. Google's US total revenue is about 18 billion. So Google has, if you look at it that way, taken 18 billion out of the pots to itself, but companies spending on their own sites at 67 billion, that's four times a bigger impact than Google. So what does that lead to? The role of, of uh, media companies in finding revenue through marketing services, and in effect taking advantage and clawing back some of that. And pervasive analytics we've talked about. The third item, analytics and how that plays, and we'll get the panel to talk about what they've done. My impression over and over talking to many, many media companies is this is very much in its infancy. We heard some comments this morning, people talking about moving beyond click-through rates and some of the simple measures. It's a more complex issue. It relates to both audiences, advertisers, and content. I'm still looking for a really clever programmatic system to actually modify content based on analytics, behavioral, and otherwise on the fly, not just in planning sessions or, or, or after the fact. And then finally, workflow. Engagement and workflow opportunities. Uh, a key opportunity for new revenue, for capturing engagement, raising renewal rates. Talked about that. So with those four setups, and I'm sure we can arrange, I don't see Michael here, but I'm sure we can arrange if, if you all care to see my slides to have them posted on the AOP site or something a afterwards so you, can, so you can get them. 